Hello everyone, this is actually my second time recording this guide on mid-range Xerix uh, with a dervish hybrid and specifically how to beat Riva using this deck. The, I updated OBS earlier and it caused my first video to output without a video, only sound. So that was unfortunate. In the first video I actually went over four replays. I'm only going to go over one or two because I just don't have the time. Alas. Okay, so let's go over the list very quickly. Uh, the list is a mid-range dervish hybrid. A pure dervish deck usually goes for aggro and burst, while a mid-range deck usually plays on curve and tries to win by way of value, specifically true for uh, Vitruvian decks. So this deck is somewhere in the middle. Uh, if, if I would have to say most games in the current metagame of Duelist are won either by turn 3, by which I mean even if the game lasts for 6 more turns or rounds, you know who's going to win by looking at the board on turn 6. The other way to win, which many of the actual midrange decks do aim for, is by out of hand burst. Like a good example for this would be midrange Magmar which actually does play on curve and has a lot of value plays but by way of thumping wave and rush minions and yes uh, bounded life force actually has out of hand burst to win the game so this list actually aims to do the same it aims to control the board early swarm the opponent sometimes win by way of burst but also it has late game so when you only get to when your hand uh, size gets low you play one card per turn it actually can still win the game so specifically many people are having problems against riva because like you get to the board if you are experienced with the game usually by turn three you can tell who's going to win but this is never the case with riva supposedly so people feel cheated when they have a board but they still lose so I'm going to discuss how this deck in particular beats Riva, but it is also the method in which this deck beats others and how Kara beats Riva. So I hope this will help you. I will post a more detailed guide on the list in text form, and I will also post the list in an image that people could look at, but let's go over it quickly. Siphon Energy, this is actually necessary because it is your only a rear line answer is also the only removal in the deck so you have to weigh whether to use it or not very very carefully if you were to replace siphon energy for say ephemeral shroud you are going to have to include russia's curse pyromancer or some other form of rear line answer oh yes before uh, i almost forgot what this is a zoo deck not an aggro deck Often the difference between Zoo and Aggro is not in list construction, but in how you play them. Zoo, whereas Aggro uses a lot of cheap minions in order to go face and keep uh, going face and replenish their minions as the opponent has to remove them using their health, Zoo seeks to use their minions to gain board control. You use your minions to take out the opponents and gain incremental control of the board until you can, your opponent has nothing to do and you kill them. So let's go over the list, Dune Casters, Everill Obelisks, Pax, two Primus Fists which could be switched out for something else, these used to be Pyromancers but the fact that playing Pyromancer after turn 1 is questionable and people are playing Blood Tear Alchemist and Scorns again makes this eh. Whispers of the Sun is your main method of burst it is still useful late game because if say at nine mana you replace into whispers you can just cast it for cycle inner oasis is actually makes every 2-2 two two you play from takes it from being able to only deal two face damage to the enemy general into six because it can swing three times 
Allo Manser can be switched out and if you don't own it I would recommend Primo Shieldmaster over it the Provoke is much better than the, than, uh, the Altas because the Altas like I take a 3-6 over a 5-3 in general and the Altas can be played around more easily because of a 3 HP breakpoint Three Crones actually play well into the Zoo mentality especially with Inner Oasis Nimbus and Star Fire Scarab might confuse some people especially seeing as they're one off but together they are a two off uh, I replace them in most matchups Nimbus is mostly there against Battle Pets if they happen to play Battle Pet and you can play Nimbus you play it it is almost an instant win against Kassiva if you draw it early enough Star Fire Scarab is against a is for games where your line of obelisks control the middle of the board and they hide in the corner and it just allows you to generate value because and actually if you look at it every single card at the five at the four drop and above and even at the three point and above is mostly here to generate value over multiple turns and I'm a healer because it's just this strong I do want to go over a couple of other lists that you can play if you want to go like this was how what the list looked like originally you can see the pyromancers and you can see Zenrui only one Kron I'm actually like inquisitive Zenrui this meta might not be the best for Zenrui but this list is very focused on tempo swings the list actually usually are their tempo decks like most tempo decks are most Zoo and Tempo decks uh, are like variations of one another it's, it just depends on the curve so while this generates less value the Tempo Swings of Zenrui can win the game outright like if I were to replace the Nimbus and the Scarab in the other deck Zenrui would be one option the other option would be uh, Star's Fury because Star's Fury can also serve as out of hand burst and a finisher. There is also a, a budget version of the list. I will be posting links to all the images later. I use this deck on a smurf to hit uh, go gold 6 with 4 chevrons, which means it's one win away from diamond. I stopped there because I want to test more decks, more budget lists next month, so I don't want to get that too quickly. You can, you can make like Sun Second Wish is actually the weakest card in here. This list also used to have Saber Spine Tigers, but I ran out of cards too quickly and I ran into too many players running Crones and other 5 drops and above. So I replaced them for Dominate Wheel and more 5 drops, which gives the list some longevity. Okay, so let's jump into a replay which of a game that I actually lost because I no we'll start with one I hadn't lost uh, okay so what is your game plan against Riva in particular more than any other oh he jumped uh, to S rank 12 earlier he was like 69 I think and I keep falling okay so whatever this doesn't really matter so Rivas like to keep their range from you. Many people are very frustrated by it, but you can't actually let the pressure off of Riva. You have to be the aggressor. It doesn't matter that your health go gets low, you have to pressure her in. Ri you want to surround Riva, to block her in, and keep killing her. E Obelisk in particular are actually good to place directly around the enemy general because with 6 HP they block them from moving um, so why are Xerix and Seikara very good at this and someone like Magmar who supposedly has the same problem of being in, unable to deal with range bad at it what really helps the, this Xerix list and Kara are that they play more than one minion per turn because if you play one minion per turn Riva will just remove it by one way or the other. So 
so you're not actually blocking a ring. You have to play multiple cards per turn and force her to deal with a board. People say that Riva can ignore the board. This is false. Riva can ignore the board either when she has a crazy hand that wins by turn 3, but if that happens, it just happens and it's not worth thinking about. Most lists can win by turn 3 or 4 if they get crazy hands. Don't think about it. It rarely happens. It just sticks in your mind, I know, but don't dwell on it, really, people. But uh, Riva, if you let Riva ignore the board, that's a mistake. You, her game plan is to retreat, and if you let her do it, then she deserves to win because she executed her game plan better than you did yours. And your game plan, especially against Riva, is to lock her in. Okay, so let's look at this hand. I'm going to replace the Scarab because Scarab generates value over many turns and I don't know about you but you can't do that against Riva. I might trade the Alomancer but it's a potential turn to play. Uh, I like Falsius against... Like I don't know. I, prob I replace I think only the Scarab. The Whisper of the Sun is sort of questionable here because I don't want to Easy turn to unless I get it, a fireblaze of the list, but let's see. Okay, the scarab. The crony is still a bit too slow here, so I, I might replace it. Okay. In this game, it actually. There, there's only one choice for turn 2 and 3, 4, 5, but I have multiple 2 drops. It actually matters. Like, it seems like playing on curve is really simple, but where I play the obelisk matters. I could place it here. In which case, I only have one spawn that I have two, two spawns that don't get to a mana tile, uh, which would be here and here. Here, I only have one spawn. No, here I have just one spawn that doesn't get to a mana tile. This does indeed not pressure her as much because she could go here, and most rivers do which would render this obelisk useless but on the other hand it already pushes her to this quadrant of the board rather than allow her to go too forward I actually wonder if I play it here where would Riva go? maybe just the psychological aspect is worth it but no, the other reason I play it here and not here is because I could play something on the mana tile like it's not relevant here but if I have like 2 plus 2, which does happen, and I could replace into it next turn, I could play something on the mana tile, and then play a 2 drop. Oh, so, and this also allows me to play something here while moving, and next, next few turns as well. Okay, the Aymara has to go because it is too expensive. Next turn, I will certainly replace the Aymara, especially as yes, player 1. This is a bit of a greedy play because, but he sort of has to do it. Okay, like, see, now here I have a choice. I could play the Fireblaze Obelisk and Whispers of the Sun and hope for a good spawn to kill the Chakri, but it is a bit of a gamble. Moreover, the Alomancer, when he dies, will give me another one. I obviously take this mana tile because he could work on it and now he's pressured again like even if he kills this with a phoenix fire I'm fine with it because it fuels my whispers okay, see here we go he probably doesn't have another 2 drop because that's not how they play at this point if I get a, a good spawn, I might play the Kron, but probably not because it would be easily killed by these things. I would probably prefer to play an Obelisk here or even further, depends on where this Dervish spawns, and hope to kill it. But it's a bit of a gamble, like. There are no 
exactly good plan here. Yeah, like I don't have five mana, so it doesn't matter. Now, I replaced into a Pax and I'm going to play it because if I play the Whispers, I need this can spawn here, which has a one in three chance, and this can spawn here or here, which is one two, which is a third. <coughs> And actually they could both spawn here, which would be, be really sad, but like my chances of killing this are basically like 50% I think, r roughly. I'd rather not take it. And since my goal is to, as I said, to block him off, I'm going to play the Pax. The Pax would spawn into multiple minions and allow me to control the board. Now, now he has a problem. Like, he can't go up because there's an obelisk here, there's an obelisk dead right in the center, and there's an obelisk here as well. So now he replenishes his hand. This is a bit scary for me because he has he's going to finish this turn with six cards in hand and six mana next turn, which allows for a lot of damage. I'm obviously going to be able to kill it. Whether I use the Siphon or not is actually... Like, this is the main reason people I use Siphon. Like, let's say that I get a bad spawn here and he here, which can't kill it. If I trade both minions into the Chakri, then I lose the pressure up on the board. What the Siphon Energy would allow me to do would allow me to kill it directly, walk the Dervish down, and still play the Kron. And this is really important, like, this is the main reason I use Siphon Energy in this list beyond the fact that it's a rear line answer that doesn't depend on range. It is because it doesn't cost mana. Like, I could use a Falsius, but what else am I going to do with my mana? Use Whispers and hope to get good spawns. Use my Bloodborne spell. Well, that would be a really weak turn. That's exactly how you let River win. You can't let her gain control. You have to, to take the tempo. And Siphon Energy is a tempo play. But I do get a good spawn here. So I'm going to trade the Fervor Dervish. Because, because we hadn't seen any fox yet, we hadn't seen any four wins magi yet. I think I trade the whispers here for the corn because both of these are answers. So I could also replace one of them. Yeah, because everything they drop has four HP, which is why Falsis is so good against Songhai and I get it back. But I, I figured to myself if I have Siphon I don't need Falsis. I have both, I should raid the Whispers next turn because the spawns here are unlikely to do anything. So now it's Pickle. Like, he got very lucky here. Like, if you ask me, he could have gotten both the uh, Obelisks, in which case he couldn't have killed the Kron. No, no, in which case he could have killed the Kron, but he would have taken 4 damage. And Steve, the fourth field finisher, would have survived. So he got really lucky here. The emote is over this spawn, which means his artifacts are going away. My hand is weak, I need more gas, so I use one Whispers. Both of my spawns are bad, sadly. Okay. I hit him with the dervish, it has 1 HP, there's no reason to save it, and I'm low on life. Okay, this was a mistake, placing it here. Like, the reason I placed it here is because it pushes him into my, the rest of my board. I'm not sure it was if it were a mistake, but like, if I place it, but if I place it here and he kills it, and he drops his blood bonus spell here, next turn, the obelisk here would not be able to spawn anything. So it's a bit of a hard call. I still think this is the right call because it forces him closer 
or at least not further from my own belief. So, just as before, Falsius and uh, Siphon Energy are more or less interchangeable versus versus uh, from high, but Falsius gives me a body and more damage, and that's my goal for right now. Okay. Like, I could push for damage here, but I, as I said, I'm through. My goal is to remove his minions while developing my board. He could kill the Oblisk next turn with, the, with his attack and the Phoenix Fire he got here, but that does mean he's not going face with it. I also use the Whispers here because I want to cycle for my deck. I also hope to get mo mo more good rolls here because I'm on a timer. He has 5 cards in hand and 8 mana. He could kill me with nothing on board. It, o it would only require a half crazy hand, but he probably has Alkyone instead of a uh, four wins Magi, so it's a bit harder for him. You see, now here he doesn't have to kill it this turn because it can't spawn a minion. Thankfully for me, I have this Whisper here. And again, I'm pushing some damage in while removing his board. And I place the Fireblaze Obelisk here, which blocks him in and guarantees to spawn. Like, no matter where it spawns, he'll it will be able to reach him. Oh, he runs 4 wins Magi and Alkyone. Interesting. Okay, he's going to concede next turn. Like, now I, I know I have to win. He has, no, he has no hand, but it is still a very big risk for me. So we have 4 wins Magi on board. I actually want to show you, like, this is, this might be an easy to miss lethal. So I want to show you how I did have lethal. I'll just stop it. Okay, so this is going to go to being a 6-4. It's going to hit him and be a 6-1. So how do I get the final damage in? The Falsius will hit the Battle Pando, which will trigger and kill the 1 HP Win Dervish. And then my general goes down and attacks her for the win. It's actually an easy to miss lethal in an actual game. My opponent saw it and surrendered. But I want to, this is important, like, look, this is where the game ended. In a quadrant with Riva being unable to move outside of it for several turns and me beating up on her. I am going to show one more replay. I actually lost it because I just finished a 12 hour work day and counting for lethal is a bit hard in such games. This is against Mazer, a very good player, uh, but the tactic still worked and the only reason I lost was because I misplayed. So this is a bad hand, I have 11 2 drops and 6 3 drops in the list. We see none of them in hand, so I'm going to obviously to replace the two most expensive cards in my hand and hope for something better. And I will. I really like these packs. I don't need two Allo monsters, especially since it's not guaranteed that I will get to play it on turn two. Also, packs into Inner Oasis is a very strong play. Okay, so I always play. The packs. Okay, so this is part of what I mentioned earlier. This might seem like an easy pick, but what do you play turn one? 
if I play the obelisk here, I am almost guaranteed to get 4 mana for next turn for an allo mana there. If I play the Pax, on the other hand, I probably do not get 4 mana, but I get to use Inner Oasis, which especially against Riva is really useful. Inner Pax in general though, especially against, against Songai, is people say that you can punish it because he can drop a, a Lantern Fox here and get a Phoenix Fire, but you can't actually you can't actually play around it. Even if I have the Siphon Energy, I'd rather actually not play scared. I'd rather put the pressure on. And Pax is the maximum amount of pressure I can get in the first turn, especially with Inner Oasis. So that will be my play. Oh, yes, I did consider playing it uh, here because then if you were to try and get value from a Lantern Fox it would be possible for the Pax to spawn one of the dervishes on the mana spring tile but it's less pressure I want to pressure the, the center of the board so I play it here he's going to drop a lantern fox okay so now I'm a bit scared because he's going to have, right now it looks like two extra phoenix fires in hand and a blood rage mask it means that next turn he can hit me for eight more damage, that's a lot I only have three siphon energies in this deck, they are the only removal so it's scary to use it this early but I have to get the tempo, I can't actually let him control the board like that especially like I'm not going to use the inner oasis because if you were to play like, he can't reach them with his general. If, if you were to play a uh, Phoenix Fire on one of those, I will be really happy. And another reason I'm going to dispel it is because I actually don't want him to use two Phoenix Fires on the Fireblaze Obelisks. Yes, it's six damage that he's not going face, but it's actually worth more. I'm going to play the Fireblaze Obelisk here, because I don't want him to be able to deal five damage to it with an attack plus a phoenix fire. It's worth more to me, yes, it's not creating as much pressure, but it can generate more value. And here is the classic river play, he's running away, and my goal is to corner him in. That's why you need to play multiple minions per turn. N like now, I'm a bit more scared, because, not scared, but I have to play the inner oasis basically, because I don't want him to kill snipe my obelisk for free. I use... even though this wind dervish isn't closer to him and the spawn was like really terrible, I'm using the dune caster on it because it gives me more bodies on board. That's my goal. See like I'm closing in on, in on him and the nimbus will have to go away. It's far too slow. Vaimara will at least be able to generate, to do something. Like, drop it on his face, but... If I had Whispers in hand, maybe I would keep the Nimbus, but as it is, I'm not. He can't actually play it safe for my General, the second key beholder. But he's trying to protect his artifacts. Another bad spawn. See, you can win with bad spawns and without a crazy burst early. Like, my hand was, wasn't was a strong early hand game. But my goal here, you see, is to block him in. I replace the Nimbus because it does nothing. I thought of playing the Everil Obelisk, but it's easily removable. Whereas the Pax um, threatens a Bloodridge Mask, Charge, or the Key Beholder. I'm not sure playing it here was the right call though, because if you were to drop his BBS here, no, like if you were to move his Key Beholder here for instance, and drop his BBS here, the Pax would not spawn anything. So 
this was a mistake but I'm not sure where I would have placed it because any other place the pack spawns could block one of my dervishes from blocking her in but it's not actually going to matter because he, Mazer is going to move and again scary because next turn he's going to have set 6 cards in hand and 7 mana ok, a bit less but 6 but look at my HP like I started this turn at 21 HP I think and like I figure that next time I'm going to either win or die I'm going to make a misplay which is going to lose me the game I'm going to talk about it for, for an instant here ok so let's talk about it I know that I basically have to win this turn that means Aymara healer is useless and the Everill Obelisk is useless the reason I'm going to, to replace the Aymara is because she does even less but if for instance I gain um, let's say Whispers of the Sun it might be worth it for me even to move this Wind Dervish up even though it can reach her just to play the Everill Obelisk and the Fireblaze and Whispers like it at least gives me options my Mare healer here doesn't matter but here's the thing I'm going to move my general and play the Everill Obelisk which doesn't increase my damage and that's a mistake like if there is something that doesn't have to happen first do it last and you will see why soon but look this I want again to stress the point like I'm co all the action happened in one quadrant for several for the last couple of turns and I pushed her in like this was my mistake there was no reason to play the BBS it does nothing there was no reason to move my general I don't need this spot Fireblaze Obelisk was good because it gave me damage but you will see so see I'm going to leave him at 2 HP and if I didn't move I would win this game but he's going to win because I derped so don't make moves that you don't have to until you until the end of your turn but again this is how you beat Riva this is and this is also how you play this list like Riva can be beaten you just have to force her to play your game again I will be posting the various variants of the list in the video description in and in a text guide and I'll see you all later